Last time we saw that special relativity leads us to the conclusion that space and time are not separate entities, but are welded together in a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. Now what makes special relativity special is what it leaves out, and that is gravity. It took Einstein 10 more years to incorporate gravity into his theory of relativity. He had to learn a new mathematics, a new abstract geometry, and one of his old professors, Hermann Minkowski, actually took his ideas from special relativity and he was able to geometrify them in a Euclidean space, which is now called Minkowski space. It was actually Minkowski that proved that space and time are welded together in the four-dimensional fabric we're calling space-time. So Einstein needed to learn all this, learn the new mathematics, learn Riemann's geometry, and have one of his first major insights into what would actually lead him to general relativity. Einstein had the happiest thought of his life when he imagined, maybe he saw somebody falling off a roof, I don't know, he noticed that any person in free fall would not feel their own weight. So if you were in an elevator and you're going up and somebody cut the cord and you start falling down, you start floating with the elevator and essentially gravity disappears for you. So Einstein noticed that Gravity, in this weird sense, was sort of a fictitious force. And depending on which sort of inertial reference frame you're in, it doesn't exist. So this led him to his principle of equivalence, which just basically makes equivalent the notion of an accelerating frame of reference and gravity. So you can imagine, again, somebody in outer space, they're floating there, some astronaut, if you will, and you put them in a box. And then you start pushing that box. And then wherever the astronaut is in the box, they'll hit the inside and they'll feel a gravitational force on themselves as the box is being pushed. So this was the indistinguishability of gravity and acceleration. And you'll notice last time when we talked about special relativity, we only talked about a constant speed. Now what's interesting about gravity is it's, an, it's a constant acceleration and you can only feel it as an acceleration. So this is finding the hint of general relativity in the fictitious force of gravity was what, what led Einstein to really complete his theory. So the necessary seed for Einstein to continue and really try and generalize his theory of relativity and bring in gravity, the seed of which was found in a fictitious force. So acceleration and gravity become equivalent in Einstein's principle of equivalence. And here comes the difficult intuition. This is the intuition that does not make sense. Well, it does make sense, but it's really difficult to wrap your head around and really understand because what gravity then becomes in general relativity is it's no longer a force, but rather gravity is the curvature of space-time itself. Now that's like, what? you like, how does, Gra what? Gravity is the curvature of space-time? That doesn't make sh that shit, that's not, that doesn't make sense. How the hell, like, this is what's difficult about general relativity. Energy momentum, or I should say, matter doesn't exist as such. We know what matter is now, and thanks to Einstein again, E equals mc squared. We know that matter is nothing but confined and condensed energy fluctuating in quark and gluon fields. Basically, that's where you get most of your mass from. But it's just energy momentum fluctuating in fields. But a consequence of being energy momentum is that energy momentum itself sitting there, it bends the fabric of reality. It bends space-time. And that bending of space-time we know and feel to be gravity. It's really strange, super hard to get your head around. It's like it still doesn't make sense, but it works. It's a beautiful idea. It's simple in that way. If you can geometrify the fabric of reality, which seems like a difficult thing to do, and then curve it, you can realize that gravity is the curvature of that space time. So when you realize that energy momentum is able to bend and warp the fabric of reality, but that still gives you equivalent 
ways of looking at the world, and they're symmetrical, as in you have a change without change, so you're looking at the same thing from different viewpoints. Frank Wilczek, in his book, A Beautiful Question, he uses probably one of the most beautiful uh, ideas and one of the most fascinating new novel art forms called anamorphic art to show you how the very ground of reality is itself a fluid-like substance and is capable of weird warping transformations and these warping transformations of course we know as gravity but it's still hard to think about but I'll show you a picture of anamorphic art and you'll know what I mean and each side represents a valid view of one and the same thing. So Frank Wilczek writes, by imagining a space filling fluid and allowing for its possible effects we are able to consider a wide variety of transformed images as representations of the same scene viewed through different states of the fluid. So basically what general relativity does is it adds to the conception of space-time being the ground floor of the universe. It adds it to it another sort of fluid element where in which condensed and confined energy momentum has the consequence of being a gravitational force and it can bend this fluid and warp it all about. So this equates to what we now call the metric field. And the metric field is the mother of all fields, and we're going to talk about fields soon. I want to do a video on quantum field theory where we talk about, where we get into fields. And the metric field is the mother of all fields. It is the space-time field or fluid that is warpable by and malleable by energy momentum within it. So you can imagine the entire cosmos as a giant cosmic ocean where everything waves, like I said last time where everything waves, but now you have energy momentum that is bending and distorting this fabric, and that, this mother of fields, is what modulates, say, the electromagnetic field, and it tells the electromagnetic field how light should travel through it. So we can see with gravitational lensing, when we look through it, we look at an image of a galaxy, and we see it warped, and it comes out in a bunch of different ways, we can now realize that the fabric of reality is a fluid-like single whole thing that extends throughout the whole universe. And so we have this beautiful single space-time fabric that is now being warped by the presence of confined and condensed energy momentum within it. And not only does this confined energy warp space-time around it, but the very warping itself is gravity. So gravity is not a real force. It's a fictitious force. It arises up out of this insanely difficult to internalize and intuit warping of space-time itself. The fabric of the universe needs to be mushy. Yeah, it's strange. But if you, I want to say consciousness too is field-like. General relativity, it's really insane. But we know it's true. We've discovered gravitational waves in the last like two years. We can see gravitational lensing in our pictures of, it, of our telescopes. Uh, we use general relativity to make our GPSs work. And I'm just making this video because it establishes a unified ground floor of the universe and it's a fluid like one. So this is just the metric field is the mother of all fields. She tells how she tells she tells the electromagnetic field how to move, how to bend, and what kind of geodesics her photons can follow. She modulates everything. Space and time plus gravity energy momentum is what the metric field is. And oh finally, before we go, Einstein's field equation. <laughs> um, on this side it says this side is geometry of space-time equals uh, energy momentum as matter on this side and it equates the two and it tells you how energy momentum tells the metric fluid how to flow and the metric fluid tells energy momentum how to flow and they use this little beautiful yin yang like relationship equal sign squiggly line in the yin yang means equals 
white implies black, black implies white, but they co-imply one another. So in Einstein's field equation, you have the geometry, the curved geometry of space-time that is modulated by the presence of energy momentum in the form of matter on this side. And the two, they play with one another and they produce gravity. So that's the basics of general relativity. I don't know if this helped you. It's a really difficult topic to talk about. Uh, I struggled making this video. I took me like 40 takes. Um, but I think I got it done. I think I'm happy with this version. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Subscribe for more content in the future. We're moving on to quantum field theory next. Now that we're familiar with the metric field, the mother of all fields. Anyways, thanks for watching.